Hi, I'm Jess. And I'm Mike. Welcome to San Francisco. Welcome to our home on wheels. This is a 2017 Mercedes Sprinter on a 144 wheelbase. And uh, come on inside, we'll show you around. All right, so we're going to start the van tour here at the shoebox storage. This is a cool little spot for our muddy shoes and other wet things that we kind of need to store away. We did this by covering our floor over the factory step. We gained like four square feet of interior space and it gave us a nice little storage spot. So that is a nice addition to the van. Right here is the refrigerator. It uh, locks in place for when we drive and when we're parked it slides out and it is a 12 volt uh, CFX 35 Dometic uh, refrigerator. Keeps all of our food nice and fresh and cold. Uh, it only has one temperature though, so no ice. Ice is a premium around here. Uh, moving this way, we have a shelf above the driver's seat. Uh, we welded some steel frame and uh, kind of fabricated this ourselves. And it adds a whole lot of storage for ba uh, bags and jackets. Anything stuffable goes up there. Underneath of that, we have our window covers. They are Reflectix covered in fabric on both sides. And sewn, uh, we sewed magnets into the frame into the edge of that window cover so it snaps in place to the, to the metal frame of the van. We also have two swivel seats up front. Uh, we really only have ever swivel one of the seats, but it becomes the most comfortable spot in the van. So it's a, uh, a great place to sit while you're driving or parked. We also have our kitchen cabinets here. So this was kind of the largest portion of the van build, uh, but we did it ourselves and we built, what is it, six different drawers out of plywood boxes and uh, we put pergo flooring on the face. It's a resilient, uh, great product to work with, super lightweight. We actually also use this product on the ceiling, so it goes up really quickly, it's smooth, it's, it's perfect material for a van build. But then, once you work with it, you have a raw edge. So we cover that up with aluminum, and we put some marine hardware on here, so these lock in place when we drive and uh, don't, don't fly open on us. Right here, we've got some dimmer switches for our LED lights. We've got a kitchen zone, a bedroom zone, and an under cabinet zone. They're all on dimmers and they kind of work independently. Under the sink, we have 10 gallons of water. So we've got two five gallon jugs and our gray water goes right out through to the floor. But uh, that, that water right there should last us for about a week. Uh, moving this way, we've got our propane stove. Uh, some more storage. We got silverware and food, pots and pans, and more food there on the bottom. Up here, we've got uh, some cabinets, overhead cabinets, toiletries, and more food. Uh, we got these cool little hinge stays, so uh, or, or cabinet stays. Once you flip this thing open, that spring goes into place and goes rigid and holds the cabinet up. And those are held in place with Velcro at the bottom. One of the big design features we really wanted to put into this van was seating. Seating for two people and the ability to eat or work and facing each other. Uh, since we both work from the road, it was very important to us to have a good work surface. So this lagoon table becomes our kitchen table in our office and it moves from side to side so you can either hop up into bed or when the time comes, this seat here opens up and becomes our toilet. So under there we have our composting nature's head toilet the best $900 toilet we've ever sat on, and we would not live in a van without it. Down here on the floor, we have our propane heater. So the propane heater and the stove both run off of a propane tank that we store back in that little cubby. So on this side of the van, we have a window that brings in a beautiful breeze. And this is Vinny trying to make his debut. He is a 14-year-old Chihuahua, and he's been really great to have on the road. But in terms of this cross breeze ventilation, we just open that window and turn on the fantastic fan and it draws in a wonderful breeze. And this is the biggest thing we would have changed about our last van. Um, we did not have any cross ventilation where we slept in the previous van and it is so important to make sure that you design and build with that in mind. So we're a big believer of using fabric in our van build. So this is just um, upholstered wood with some batting and this is homosote and that's actually a pin board. Um, so you can see you can just put your favorite friends up on your wall, like uh, Matt, who's in our Tiny Fest photos. So a lot of people ask us about living in a van with a dog, and we have a few measures in place to make sure that he is taken care of. One of them is the fan, so that it pulls in cool air. The second is our insulated window covers. 
And then also we have a security camera back here. So that allows us to watch the video feed of him. So we know if anything's going on in here that we need to come back and address. We also have something called the temp stick and that allows us to receive alerts to our phone through our Wi-Fi hotspot if it's too hot or too cold. And then again, we can come back in and make sure that he stays comfortable. So this is a rack from Zen Vans. It has magnetic hooks that fold away when not in use. And we put our clothes here every night actually to air out while we sleep so that we can wear our clothes multiple days in a row. All right, so in here we have the brains of our electrical operation. So here we have access to our fuses, to the solar charge controller, so we can monitor the health of our batteries, see what's going in and what's going out. We're on a pretty lean power setup, so we only use a 400 watt pure sine wave inverter because we don't run a whole lot on the 120. So we also have a 4G LTE booster from WeBoost, and that helps us get one to two extra bars when we're on the edge of service, which allows us to work in more remote places. I would recommend it. Yeah, definitely. We got it because I was going to be working full time um, at the very beginning of our venture. I don't work full time anymore, but it's really critical to have that connectivity so that we can keep the wheels rolling financially. So the way I make money and live on the road is actually through freelance science communications. And what this means is I help translate scientific materials for public consumption, essentially PR for science. What this means on a day to day is that um, I spend a couple hours a day in front of my computer, either on emails or phone calls with clients. And then once every two months, I'll go fly to meet up with a client. And that's really why we have this really awesome workspace here is so that we can both work at this table. So I used to be in research science and I was noticing that there wasn't a lot of communication between the general public and scientists. There just wasn't somebody who could bridge that gap to translate the way that each of those communities speak. And so that's um, where I tried to find a job. So I, I went to a communications agency and um, we helped build a career path for scientists who are interested in helping the public understand more about science. And so I was a, I think it was like a scientific executive or something, you know, a fancy title in the PR world. And that's where I, I really was able to bridge that communication gap. And that's what I still do today, just more in a freelance capacity as opposed to a, a full-time, you know, 50 hour a week job. Um, there were definitely negotiations to this career choice. When I was a full-time employee, I was commuting four hours a day between Baltimore and Washington, DC, you know, driving, taking the subway, taking a train, walking. So it was just a very long commute. Eventually, after I'd been there for a year or two years, you know, you get a day from home, two days from home per week. And then towards the end, you know, it's just better to, you know, work four extra hours than to be commuting. So then my schedule was moving work from home, which allowed me to really see that opportunity for me to take it remote as in like remote, the not just sitting in my house in one position, but literally work from anywhere. And so now that we travel, our home is everywhere we go, meaning that anywhere we go, as long as there's internet, I can work and I can make a living. I'm not tethered to, you know, a house brick and mortar. Um, and that's really been one of the freedoms that we've been so happy to have and to make and to create for ourselves. And there's nothing stopping you if you want to do it too. So since we've been living on the road, I've become a traveling artist and every day I take my sketchbook out and I go to all the cool places we, we visit and I get to draw. That's, that's what I do and I draw and I paint. And so this here is my little traveling art kit. Uh, you open it up and I've got a pencil and all these awesome water brushes, uh, my technical drawing pens, a little refillable ink. This is my kind of custom made watercolor kit. I took a 12 pack of watercolors, divided them all in half, so now it's a 24 pack of travel watercolors. Here's my little key. And uh, this is the kit that I take. It's always ready to go. On this side, I have uh, business cards because as I'm outside, I've got these business cards and stickers. Everyone would say, oh, what are you doing? So I say, this is me. This is my accountant drawn there. And I'm always uh, kind of out and about, but uh, this is the sketchbook I use. It's about five by seven. And uh, you can see every day it uh, fill up another page. I really love that after this trip or, or where, you know, over the years, I just build this whole catalog of journals and they, they can all line up on a shelf 
I put the date and the location on the spine, and it's my growing and ever-expanding project. Uh, so back here in the garage, we have two bikes, uh, skis, snowboard, a surfboard, an inflatable stand-up paddleboard, a skateboard, camping gear, Burning Man gear, a box of shoes, and a box of snow gear. Thanks for checking out our van. We're going to sit here and enjoy the sunset. But don't forget to follow along at van.there and draw an underscore there. We'll see you on the road.